Welcome Pure Maths 3 students to Maintenance Week 5. We are looking this week at four different key indicators. We're looking at algebra, we're looking at logs and exponential functions. We are also looking at trigonometry and differentiation. So the first one is a modulus question. Um, I'm going to continue my normal practice of squaring both sides. And so I should get x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then I'll bring everything across to the left hand side. So I should get 3x squared uh, plus 2x minus 1 is greater than 0. And we want to factorize this, I think. So I think it's 3x minus 1, x plus 1 is greater than 0. I think that's right. Let me just quickly check that. Yeah, that looks good. Now, if we think about the graph here, um, we've got a root at <coughs> 1 third and at minus 1 and um, it looks roughly like that and we want where it's greater than 0 so we're looking at these parts here so x is less than uh, minus 1 or x is greater than 1 third so that's that one now if I was to sketch this next function here um, this modulus function y equals 2x plus 5 modulus minus 1. Now we know that the place where it crosses the x-axis is at uh, negative 5 over 2 or negative 2.5 okay negative 2.5 or normally except that we've got this so we drop it down 1 so it would be here at negative 1 at uh, when we're at negative 2.5 and so um, that would be that now, it'll look something like this. And the other thing that we uh, know is where it crosses the y-axis. It crosses the y-axis when x is 0. So uh, you go in here, 2 times 0 is 0, plus 5 is 5, modulus 5 is 5, 5 take away 1 is 4. So this here it would be at positive 4. Obviously this is not drawn particularly well. Um, and that's a, it's a rough sketch of the modulus function there. So the next one here, uh, we have a cubic polynomial. And we know that a and b are constants. And it's denoted by px. And we know that these are factors of px. Find the values of a and b. Okay, so if they're factors, we know that p1 equals 0. And we know that p minus 2 equals 0. Um, okay, those would be our roots. So, um, if that's the case, we when we chuck in 1, we would get, so we're going to chuck it into here, we would get a, right, 1 cubed is 1, plus b, 1 squared is 1, minus 3, minus 2, equals 0. So a plus b minus 5 equals 0, so that's one of our equations. Then the second equation that we could do is when we use this minus 2. So minus 2 cubed is minus 8. So minus 8a. Uh, and then minus 2 squared is positive 4. So plus 4b. I'm just putting it in, into here. Uh, minus 3 times minus 2, which is positive 6 minus 2. And that should also equal 0. So minus 8a plus 4, uh, 4b uh, plus 4 should equal 0. We can divide that by 4. So minus 2a plus b plus 1 equals 0. And we could perhaps take this here and rewrite it as a equals 5 minus b. I've just rearranged it. Now I can pop this into the value of a here. So I substitute that and I get minus 2 into 5 minus a. Uh, sorry, for, sorry, 5 minus b. Plus b plus 1 equals to 0. And let's just uh, move over here. So what do we get? Well, we get negative 10 plus 2b plus b plus 1 equals 0. So we get 3b uh, minus 9 equals 0. So b is equal to 3. And therefore, a is equal to 5 minus 3, which is 2. Okay, so now that we know that, uh, what a and b are, we have to find the other linear val uh, factor of px. So what you do is 
well, you know that the other linear factor is going to be something like this, and it, when mold, it's going to be something. It's going to be something x plus or minus something. Okay, something like that. Okay, now we know that we've got x. What is the other one? X minus one, and then x plus two. And altogether, that makes this ax cubed plus bx squared minus 3x minus 2 business. And we found out that a is 2, so it's 2x cubed. And then b was 3, so 3x squared plus, oh, no, minus 3x minus 2. Now, what we do is we can expand this here, uh, these guys. And when we expand it, we get, what do we get? x squared... Uh, plus x, so it will be expanded, x squared um, plus x minus 2. Okay, now straight away you should be able to tell what we need here. Um, to get this here, 2x cubed, we must be timesing this one by ax, which means that a, in this case, has to be 2x. The a is 2, so it's 2x. Okay, so that should be 2x. Now the second thing that we can look at is we can look at the last number that we're trying to get, the one without the term without x. This one here, we need a minus 2. Now that would be timesing this and the c, which means the c must therefore be positive 1. So that would be the last linear factor. Now how do we check? Well, if 2x plus 1 is a factor, then the root is minus 1 half. So if we go p minus 1 half into the formula, we ought to get 0. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Negative 1 half. Pop that into the formula and we'll end there. Uh, yeah, okay, what do we get? Yes, I get 0. p minus 1 half is 0. Just check that on my calculator now. And therefore, we are correct with that. Okay, so moving on to logs and exponential functions. I've got to solve this equation here. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a log, log base 5 of everything. Log base 5 of 2 is less than or equal to. Now, if I take log base 5 of 5x, it's x. It's less than log base 5 of 8. And that's the solution. And if you want to, you can chuck that in your calculator, and you can get um, the you know, a more accurate answer. Or well, it's not a more accurate. You can round it to three significant figures. So log base two of uh, five of two, log base five of two is uh, 0 0.431. 0 0.431 is less than or equal to x is less than. And then if we go log base five of eight, um, that's uh, 1.29. Less than less than 1.29. Okay, so that's the idea for those ones. This next one is kind of like a modulus thing. Um, it's, it hasn't quite come out correctly here. I think that should be to the 5 to the power of x. So um, hopefully it'll be adjusted in your um, notebooks before you get to it. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides. Um, uh, so square both sides. So I should get 5 x. Uh, to the x minus 7, and I'm squaring that. I'll deal with that in a minute, is less, uh, less than 16. Now, when we go 5 to the power of x times 5 to the power of x, we get 5 to the power of 2x. We add the indices, remember? Uh, then we'll get negative uh, 7, negative 14 times uh, 5 to the power of x uh, plus 49 is less than 16. Now, probably what I would do at this point, I'm just thinking about it, I would probably substitute. So I might say y is equal to 5 to the power of x, and therefore I'll have y squared here, minus 14y plus 49 is less than 16. I'll bring that 16 across, so I get y squared minus 14y and then if we go 49, subtract 16, when we get that's um, 49 minus 16, 33. Uh, so minus 33 is less than 0. Okay, at th this point, um, we can factorize. So y uh, minus 3 
y oh hang on that's not quite oh sorry that's a plus 33 um y uh minus 11 is less than zero now if we were to sketch this we've got roots at um 3 and 11 and we want is less than zero so we've got this bit here so uh, 3 is less than y is less than 11 and then we can substitute uh, the what we had for y back in there so 3 is less than 5 to the power of x is less than 11 then we can take a log I know this is very long isn't it log base 5 of both sides so log base 5 of 3 is less than x is less than log base 5 11 and um, you could potentially if you wanted to at this point um, chuck those values in to your calculator and round them to three significant figures um, but I'm not going to do that okay you can do that that's easy enough okay um, now the next one is uh, this is, I think this one's a past exam question. Given that x is equal to 4 multiplied by 3 to the minus y, express y in terms of x. So probably what we could do is take a log of both sides here. So let's go log x equals, and then we can use our log rules. Log 4 plus log 3 to the minus y. And then next line log x equals log 4 minus y log 3 bring that across to the other side so log x plus y log 3 uh, equals log 4 Keep the y over here, uh, y log 3 equals, and then bring the log x across the other side, log 4 minus log x. Now we can use our, whoops, use our log rules at that point, so we've got y log 3 equals log, and we can go 4 over x. And then last step is to go y and divide both sides by log uh, 3. So log 4 over x over log 3. Okay, so that's that one. Now, I'm not sure if that's exactly how they wanted me to do it or not, but that's the way I've done it nonetheless. Uh, let me just quickly check the answer for that one. Uh, question 12. Um, yeah, essentially, yep, that's fine. Okay, now, uh, the next one is a trigonometry question. Now, this is a little bit tricky because um, I'm not sure if we'll have covered this in class by the time you get to it, but um, f the first step that we're going to do in solving this is we're going to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So cosec is 1 over sine. So cosec 2 is 1 over sine to theta. And then sec is 1 over cosine, so I write that as 1 over cosine theta. And cotangent is um, 1 over tan. And since tan is sine over cosine, then cotangent is cosine over sine. So that would be my first move. And then probably what I would do in my next line, I'd just uh, convert this here It's an, uh, using my double angle rule. So my double angle rule is over here at... So I can create, uh, I've got a 2a or a 2 theta, and I'm going to change it to this, okay? So when I change it, I'll get 1 over 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then I'm going to um, make one denominator on the bottom of the uh, right-hand side. So I'll get this, and I'll get sine theta plus cosine squared theta. Now, at this point, I could cr times both sides by cosine theta and sine theta. So I'd get maybe 1, uh, or if I times, um, I could get rid of it from the left hand, uh, from the right hand side, and I'd have this. 
like this. Okay, now you can see that that cancels out that, that cancels out that. Okay, and then my next line, I times both sides by 2, so I get 2 and 2 sine theta plus cosine squared theta. Now, we all know that we can change that uh, um, cosine squared theta into 1 minus sine squared theta. And then we can multiply that out, so we get 2 sine theta plus 2. So, sorry, that should be a plus here. Minus 2 sine squared theta. We bring everything over to the left-hand side. So I get 2 sine squared theta minus 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. And now I'm ready to solve the equation. Now this looks like I can't factorize it, which means I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I would go, I can move this out of the way I think now. Uh, instead of x we've got sine theta, so sine theta equals minus b. Now that's minus minus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's minus 2 all squared, uh, plus square root, uh, not square root, sorry, uh, b, squared minus, uh, b squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is minus 1, and that should be all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2, and then we should get our different results for a, uh, for theta. So just pop that into your calculators. You'll get is equal to 1.366 or uh, negative 0 0.3660. Now obviously that one is irrelevant because sine theta, that's undefined for sine theta. So to find theta we go inverse sine of, uh, and I would use the unrounded number of course, And I get um, is equal to minus uh, 21 degrees, 21.5 degrees. Now, if you think about your sine graph, um, we've got an answer here. We should also have an answer here. Um, so that's like if we add that uh, 21 on to 180, we should get an answer of 201. So 201.5. Um, and and then if we add uh, minus 21.5, if we add 360 to that, we'll get the other one, which should probably be at 338.5 degrees. So those, I would say, would be our two answers. Okay, so the last question for today's maintenance is we're looking at differentiating, and we're going to use the product rule. So again, you guys might not have done this by the sta stage you get this given to you for maintenance, but you see that you've got something times something, um, and it would be quite complex to try and expand that uh, 2x plus 1, and then uh, then uh, expand, uh, then multiply everything by x squared, and then uh, differentiate all of those functions. So we use the product rule, which is this u and v, so we're going to say u is equal to x squared, and then we go du dx, uh, so that would be 2x, and we say that v is equal to 2x plus 1 um, uh, to the power of 4. And we can use the chain rule to say, well, that when we, uh, when we differentiate it would be, well, let me just show you again from last year. We, if, we say, if we say this is 2x plus 1, is let's just give it a letter u again um, and then du dx is equal to 2 and then we would say uh, let's say y is equal to u to the power of 4 and dy du would be equal to 4u cubed and then to get um, dy dx we multiply the dy du by the du dx and so we'd get 8u cubed all right and uh, that would be 8, and then whatever u was, which is 2x plus 1 cubed. Okay, so that's what we've got up here. 8 into 2x 
plus one all cubed. Okay, so just a refresher on your chain rule from last year. Now, um, so uv, if we're going to differentiate that using the product rule, this is what we follow. So we go v, now what's v? That's this one here. So 2x plus 1 to the power of 4 multiplied by du dx, which is, um, where is du dx? This one here, 2x, so I can pop a 2x out here. Plus u, which is this one here, x squared, uh, times dv dx, which is this one here. Um, so it's times by, I'll put the 8 in the front, and then the 2x plus 1 to the power of 3. And that would be uh, that one differentiated. Alright, well I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any problems with any of these questions. Good luck, God bless.